Well, hello everybody, I am going to tell you how you can change and replace your uh, brake rotors and brake pads on a Toyota Corolla 2005. So first of all, maybe I just tell you what you need um, to have. For sure you are going to use some brake rotors and the brake pads and it's a good idea to have some wire brush and some bungee cords to later be able to hang the calipers and then you need some eye protections and for sure some thread locker here and an anti-seize um, paste with a um, caliper piston compressor brake cleaner some ratchets and sockets and some lever here as you can see and it's important to have a uh, torque wrench here to just take the correct measure for that the first step is just to loosen the lug nuts here and before you um, pick up the car because you need this friction between the tire and the ground and what you are going to need is also a jack and some jack stands here so we start uh, with um, just uh, loosening them here next you can just uh, raise the car here And then put the jack stands underneath so the only point is here to just check your uh, car manual to see where you can put the jack stands for example in this case you can see two grooves here and you need to put the stands in between because it is kind of uh, strengthened here and for the jack stand itself you can see here there is a special place to put it there Remove the tire, and it's a good measure to just put it underneath the car to protect it. So, from now on, you can see here everything. A good idea is just to turn the steering wheel, I need to unlock it, and uh, you can see the caliper, the caliper uh, bracket, the rotor itself, and the brake pads inside. Loosen this um, uh, screw here. In some cars, you can see that here. There is another uh, bolt you need to fix it but in this case because of the good design you don't need to so just simply unscrew this the other way around so and then the one here before you completely open it now you can just uh, lever this screwdriver here since I'm going to um, just get rid of this rotor, it doesn't matter. I don't have to be that gentle. But now I can just completely open these two. So there are no differences in the screws. I can put it here. Now just check out if they can be separated. Yeah. And now the caliper is free. You can see here some uh, hardware for the brake the piston here the caliper and the caliper bracket is still there so the next part is just to fix it somewhere here because the brake line should not go under, under should not undergo any pressure now you can see it is fixed here and there is no pressure on this uh, brake line here the brake pads are here just take it out you can see that it still has some meat on that so it is not that bad the one on the on this side so you can see the brake wear um, indicator it has not touched the brake rotor it is not that bad but it's still it is fairly the last uh, millimeters of the thickness so it's a good idea to just change them just before installing uh, everything to just check out if the new and the old parts match so here you can see the old ones and here the new ones so if I pick up these two you can see that the profile fairly or is the same I hope so at least yeah it matches perfectly so I will be using this later it shouldn't be a problem and then here also the same story just notice that there this uh, brake wear indicator indicator is only on one side you can see here there is one down there and one up there so these are the the bolts which are keeping the whole um, caliper bracket in place so first you need to loosen them I just clean them there is a bunch of rusty 
debris here. Be careful not to touch and damage these uh, rubber boots. Good, now I will put the lever. Watch out. So now let's go for the upper one. And that's it. So I will loosen this bolt here. So you can keep this in your hand because it may fall down at the end. So it's always a good idea to just take a look at the bolt and see if you see any. You can see here some uh, thread locker, some uh, some yellow color here. So it's a good idea later to just use them. So, so the next step is just to bring out the rotor. The thing is you can use here some hammer to just... Uh, um, hammered from side to side but it is uh, fairly hard to do but a better solution is just to use these bolts you just screw them here let me do it first like that it's better to do it symmetrically so and now the other side and it's done so that was it now let's see if the old and the new one match so old out and new in so you can see that the edges here it is fairly worn out but this one is new so I will put them both on the ground it looks pretty similar I mean if I just turn it around looks good so let's go for the next step the next step is to just uh, brush here and make the surface uh, rust free you can use some like metal wire brush use the eye protection glasses now the next step is to just clean the four caliper bracket so we can already remove these brake hardwares it's a good idea always to buy the new ones however i did not so i will be using the old ones take care of the boot so we are all good now you can see that every piece is uh, clean there is no rust and no debris of the um, brake pads on that the next step would be to put some anti-seize over that however before starting I would like to just clean all these edges here because we are going to pump it down uh, into the bore so I will use um, WD-40 but not directly so just slightly over this part and try to clean these edges point is not to um, put any um, anti-seize paste on the rubber because um, they will hurt the rubber and lessen the lifetime so it is important to use the correct synthetic uh, grease or silicon grease I'm going to show you I'm going to use this one but don't be so generous because um, you don't want these parts to come in contact with um, the brake pad and the brake disc and weaken your brake good now we are all good to um, just push this piston uh, into the bore the trick is just to use the old uh, brake pad use our caliper um, um, piston compressor here and just I hope there is enough friction however before doing that it's always a good idea to check the reservoir of the master cylinder of the brake to make sure that the rest of the oil which is pumped out here will not pour out of the reservoir because it will ruin the whole um, um, 
car and also the color. You can come here. So this is the reservoir of the master cylinder and you can see that the brake lever is um, below the max so we want to be sure that it will not get out of this car. I will just um, turn here and you will take a look at it. So let's go. You can turn it gently. Now I am also at the same time looking at the um, fluid level. It is all good, so no problem. Let me just loosen it a little bit. It's not the best tool I have made. It was a little bit silly. Now I will continue. Okay, it's a little bit shitty here, but... So make sure that you do not overdo it, because now we are pretty close to the last part. I will just push a little bit. I think it should be enough. So you can see that we have pushed it all back to the bore. The piston is completely down. There should be enough place for the new rotor and the uh, brake pad itself because they are new and they have more thickness. You can see here that the brake uh, fluid level came up to the max. Previously it was here, now it came up to max. So once you come to the other side, I mean the driver's side, be sure that it will not get out. Otherwise you need to get uh, some of these fluid out of this reservoir. So we put the cylinder inside and put some um, synthetic um, grease over that. The next part is these slide pins. You can see that they already slide very easily so they are all good however still i would like to just bring one of them out and check so there are some rubber on this side i put it back and on the other side there is no rubber so they are different make sure that you do not um, put them on the wrong place so you can see there is a good amount of grease over that however i would put some more Good. So let's start by taking this out and just cleaning it. So just make sure that these edges are not rusted, otherwise you need to get rid of that by some brush. And make sure that this plastic edge comes along on this on this groove again so that no rust can get inside now you can see that just like before this moves freely next we will move to this part okay now the slide pins are all beautifully placed and they can move freely this is done next step just um, we will put the rotor here install the caliper bracket and then the spark good the next step is to lubricate these uh, contact patches where those hard bar um, comes over that. So it's a good idea to first just uh, lubricate these parts and then also the hardware itself with these anti-seize paste and just, just simply put it in. Looks good. We did the same uh, also for the other side and also in this case for this car, we have this piece which goes inside. I just put a very thin layer only on the part which comes in contact with the piston but not more because there is plastic part i will just put it inside looks fairly good and um, just be sure to change your gloves and not to touch the brake pads and the brake disc with all these grease over that good so i will put also some of these anti-seize slightly on the edges which comes in contact but as I said, just make sure not to put too much. 
Okay, this is one side. Let me check. Yeah. So they are both ready. I will bring the the brake rotor. So here you can see that I have already touched it uh, with my oily hands uh, and um, you are not going to put it like that. So before, use some uh, brake cleaner to uh, get rid of it and uh, some clean um, a handkerchief maybe and also one part that I have forgotten to put is here so you are going also to put some here good so I am going to use some of these and spread over it. So I put the rotor in order to fix it. Use one of these knots. Good. I will put another lock knot just to fix it better. Looks good. So it is tied. Now it's time to put them there. But beforehand. I will put a slight thread locker over these bolts. Good, prepared. Uh -oh. Now let's take the caliper brackets. First one in, let's go for the second one. You need to torque them down to 107 Newton meters. This is now 107. We will just do this and 17 millimeter socket, put it inside. Done. Good, now it's time to put the brake pads inside. So they shouldn't need really forces. And the one on the other side. Looks perfect. Now it's time to bring the caliper over that. I will just get rid of this bungee cord. Uh oh. So put those inside be careful because there is in this type of car there is this kind of groove so as you see here it cannot be done like that you need to turn it and then bam done I don't think you need anything over these ones because I don't see any thread lock from before Looks perfect. Now we need to torque them down to 30 Newton meters. Done. That's it. So this is the final step. Just bring the tire 
and put it on. Tighten the lock nuts and torque them down to 110 Newton meters. But before that, you need to bring the whole system down so that you have contact between the tire and the ground. And as a final step, don't forget to press the pedals to um, make some oil pressure behind the piston. We did the same thing on the other side. So the whole uh, rotors and the brake pads are uh, replaced now and we have just fastened them uh, hand tightened them now we will just um, jack it up and remove the jack stands from both sides carefully bring down the so torque it down to your spec from your car manual in this case I think it is a around 120 in a cross pattern two for the other side so let's turn on to get more boost now you can see if I press the um, brake pedal, there will not be, it goes easily and after some times of pressing, the pressure will boost up. So now you are all good to do. That was all about changing rotors and the brake pads on a Corolla. Thank you for watching.